an ancient Buddhist pilgrimage. It encircles the island of Shikoku. The route is almost a thousand miles. Through the centuries, walking it has taken about two months. It still does. The path is essentially a circle. Pilgrims may begin at any point, but to complete the pilgrimage must return to their starting point, must complete the circuit. Along the way are temples. Eighty-eight of these are numbered in sequence. Several more bear no number, but are equally a part of the pilgrimage. Each of the temples is different, but number one is representative. At the sides of the gate, guardian deities protect the temple. When pilgrims pass through the gate of their first temple, they commit themselves to the pilgrimage. Their white robes signify willingness to meet death should it overtake them along the way. Purification. The pagoda, a powerful ritual symbol. The main hall. Light, and of incense, pledges of dedication, from the main hall, Pilgrims turn to the chapel enshrining Kobo Daishi, for it is faith in this great saint which impels them to make this pilgrimage. Kobo Daishi is a pilgrim. He lived from 774 to 835. He was great as a religious philosopher, poet, artist, social worker, civil engineer. He founded the Shingon sect of Japanese Buddhism, but the pilgrimage is non-sectarian. It is inspired by deep faith, not so much in the master that he was, as in the savior he has become over the centuries. A deity, a miracle worker with the power to cure sickness, to make the blind see. This prayer repeats the word for eyes. To heal the crippled. grant easy birth to women suffering a difficult pregnancy. A temple is a complex of several buildings, several altars, each dedicated to a different deity who represents one aspect of the Buddha nature, as Kanon represents compassion. Or Yakushi, the power of healing. After they worship, pilgrims seek out the priest and ask that the albums they carry be inscribed to testify that they came here. The album will be cherished.
Temple number one has a shop where the accoutrements are sold. Robe, surplus, papers of dedication and a case to carry them in. Album. Hat. And most important, staff. For the staff symbolizes the Daishi. It embodies his presence. It is the central tenet of the pilgrimage that the Daishi travels always with the pilgrim, to some literally, to others in spirit. The motto of the pilgrimage is Dogyo Ninin. We two, pilgrims together, the Daishi and I. These words lie at the heart of the pilgrimage. Many of the pilgrimage temples offer overnight accommodations. to worship. Settai, gifts to help a pilgrim on his way. These people come to Temple One the same days every year from Wakayama Prefecture across the Inland Sea. They give tangerines they have grown and money they have collected. Settai is sometimes the planned activity of a group, sometimes the spontaneous act of an individual. In either case, it is a way of participating in the pilgrimage. In return, the pilgrim gives a paper of dedication. Of course, the temples are important to pilgrims. They are goals to achieve along the way. They are places of worship and prayer. The priests provide counsel to those who are troubled. The visits to the temples do not constitute the pilgrimage, they merely punctuate it. The pilgrimage is an ascetic exercise for the layman. Its value lies in the physical, mental, and spiritual effort the pilgrim must put forth, the physical, mental, and spiritual rewards which accrue. It is true that 
Nowadays, most pilgrims go by bus. They are sincerely pious, but riding a bus is not ascetic exercise. And so the central meaning of the pilgrimage, as it has existed through the centuries, eludes them. It is believed that the pilgrimage path follows a course which the Daishi trod as a young man, a wandering ascetic driven to search for the essence of Buddhism. He was born on this island of Shikoku at a place now marked for the 75th temple. His family was of the aristocracy. When he was 15, he was sent to the capital so that his uncle could tutor him. At 17, he entered the country's only university, where sons of the aristocracy were trained for government service. But this career was not for him. He converted to Buddhism, dropped out of the university. For the next 12 years or so, he alternated study at the temples near the capital with periods of arduous austerity in the mountains. He returned often to the peaks of his home island. In later writings, he described an ascetic surely much like himself. He brushed aside the snow to sleep using his arms for a pillow. The blue sky was assailing over his hut, and the clouds hanging over the mountains were his curtains. In summer, he delighted in the gentle blazes, but in winter, he watched the fire with his neck drawn into his shoulders. If he had enough horse chestnuts and bitter vegetables to last 10 days, he was lucky. But his deep-rooted will could not be taken away from him. At Cape Moroto, the tip of a peninsula jutting into the Pacific, he broke through to enlightenment. went to China, studied there with the master, inherited his mantle. After his return came the great years, friend of the emperor, acknowledged master. He founded the first school open to all students without regard to their social or economic status. He founded Koyasan, his monastic center in the mountains, for he never stopped believing that meditation should be practiced in high mountains, in deep forests. Here he lies buried. Pilgrims follow a path trod by the Daishi with the Daishi at their side. Their bells hung from the waist can be heard even from a distance. Stone markers along the way guide and reassure.
Some of the temples have an altar for the fire service called Goma. significance of fire is much the same in most religions. It burns away the sins of man. Thank <laughs> you. 
Goma at another temple. Legends of the Daishi are everywhere. Many concern water. How he built dikes to tame rampaging rivers. How he struck his priest's staff into the ground to bring forth a spring where the people desperately needed it. Legends must be taken on faith. But one monumental achievement still exists. In the year 818, the wall of a small reservoir at this place collapsed. The imperial court sent a director to rebuild it. He worked for two years and failed. The troubled governor of the province petitioned the court to send the Daishi. And in the summer of 821, he came. He rallied the people and in three months built this huge earthen dam. It still stands, impounding the fourth largest irrigation lake in Japan. Many of the pilgrimage temples are on the plains, for the plains are where the people live. 
Every temple is in the religious sense a mountain. But this is an abstraction that does not concern the pilgrim. As he crosses the plains, he focuses on the real peaks that rise beyond and on the temples that crown those peaks. He knows what the mountain will demand of him, what it will give in return, a lifting of the spirits at the summit, a sense of awe. In modern Japan, the mountains still possess the mystic aura which drew the Daishi to train, to practice austerities, to seek enlightenment. The mountains and the long circuit of Shikoku still draw pilgrims. Thank you. 